Unlike in previous generations, most video games now are made to be as accessible and player-friendly as possible. But even though contemporary releases have moved away from design philosophies like limited lives, time restrictions, and manual save areas, and just let you kick back, relax, and switch your brain off for 10 hours or so, developers still seem obliged to include moments that make you want to throw the whole console out the window. These player-hating moments aren't just reserved for your Dark Souls or Super Meat Boys either. Even in the most kid-friendly games, you still find find moments where it feels like you're doing nothing more than repeatedly running into a wall for hours trying to make some progress. Whether that's because of a difficulty spike out of nowhere, or plain old terrible design that decides to introduce you to new mechanics that don't fit at all with the rest of the game. Moments like these can completely ruin an otherwise excellent gaming session, and if they're really bad, an otherwise good controller. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 annoying video game moments that made you turn the console. Number 10. Stealth Suicide Bombers in Rainbow Six Siege Providing a genuinely difficult challenge either alone or with friends, Siege's terrorist hunt tasks you with using the environment to your advantage to clear out a map full of enemies. It all sounds simple enough, but the low health high damage gameplay the series is known for is in full effect in this mode, meaning even one enemy is deadly enough to take you down. Which would be fine if ridiculously tough suicide bombers weren't roaming the hallways. Storming at you as soon as you're in their line of sight, it takes sometimes as much as a full clip or a well-timed headshot to take these guys down before they blow you completely to smithereens. Not only that, but they're equipped with regular weapons too, so they can chip away at your health even if they don't get close enough to strike a crippling blow. Also, if you crank the difficulty up to realistic, then you might as well just wave your sanity goodbye. Being bombarded by these heavy breathing horrors is annoying enough on lower difficulties, but here a single one can easily force you to restart the session all over again. Number 9. Battling Fontaine in Bioshock The original Bioshock isn't really remembered for the quality of its first person shooting, so it's no surprise that the game's final boss fight, which revolves around simply hitting Fontaine with as much firepower as you can get your hands on, is barely ever brought up as a series high point. In fact, it probably would have been forgotten about entirely if not for how horribly frustrating it proved to be for most players. Not only does the level bank on you already having plenty of upgraded weapons and a huge stash of ammo going into the fight, and only reduces your ability to acquire these resources as you continue to lose money from dying, but Fontaine himself is much faster and much more aggressive than any other enemy encounter in the game. Bioshock was so good at playing with expectations and delivering a subversive plot, so it's such a shame that it had to end on such a sour, trite note. Number 8. Getting killed off screen by an enemy in Hotline Miami Hotline Miami is a purposefully infuriating game at times. While the top-down shooter gives you the opportunity to pull off ridiculously brutal kills in a brilliantly 80s-inspired world, it makes achieving these feats of ultraviolence feel earned by constantly killing you over and over again until you have enemy placement and the map layout completely memorized. But the top-down presentation of the game can lead to some pretty cheap deaths, especially if you let your guard down. Getting shot by someone you didn't even know was lurking off screen can be horrible, and if you think you've mastered a level only to be clipped by one remaining guy you didn't even see, well, it could be enough to make you quit out entirely. You can inflict some outrageous amounts of pain in Hotline Miami, but the game always has a habit of pushing just as much of it back onto you. Number 7. Being forced back to an old save in Dead Rising the structure of the original Dead Rising's campaign was pretty unique, giving you a 72-hour window where you had to balance story missions with free-roaming zombie-smashing fun. Get too distracted and let the clock run down and you could miss out on entire quests or even the game's ending. But jump into them unprepared, without the right weapons or skills at your disposal and you could suffer the exact same fate. To make matters worse, you could only save at bathrooms located around the game's virtual mall, and you only had a small number of slots to utilize tactically throughout. There were no checkpoints, and if you died, you'd be kicked back to your latest save, meaning you could royally mess up hours of progress with one measly mistake. Consequently, if you used your saves wrong and didn't leave yourself with enough time to get to the next objective, you could literally ruin the whole game for yourself, forcing you to restart the whole thing over from scratch. So whether you lost only 40 minutes of progress or whole hours though, it always ensured that you wouldn't be touching the game for at least a few days afterwards. Number 6. Following the Blood in Max Payne Notoriously considered one of the most frustrating video game levels of all time, the uniquely nightmarish aesthetic of this creative combat-free sequence from the original Max Payne wasn't enough to save it from being a complete misery to play. 
Taking place within Max's subconscious as he remembers the night his family was killed, the player is made to follow a series of blood trails in an otherwise pitch black environment. Not only is it confusing to understand where the hell you're even going, as you try to get from one end of the level to another without doubling back on yourself, but taking a wrong turn and following the wrong trail could lead to you falling to your death thanks to some insidiously placed traps. The scene is unnerving for sure, but after the 20th death it becomes horrifying for all the wrong reasons. Number 5. Being discovered during tailing missions in Assassin's Creed any game with an insta-fail stealth sequence, whereby being seen by an NPC results in a game over, needs to be thrown into the fucking sea. Prevalent in multiple blockbuster releases over the years, we can thank the Assassin's Creed series for the rising popularity of this horrible mission type. Repeating quests that force you to patiently tail potential targets and enemies without being seen, the franchise is full of different variations on this same gimmick. But the one constant is that every time one of these missions pops up, you'll want nothing more than to switch your console off entirely. Being caught and having to restart a section of a level is one thing, but when that restart comes after you've had to follow an agonizingly slow character over a huge section of a map, it feels like a personal slap in the face. Just walk faster, goddammit! Number 4. Every Second of the High Road in Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy If you're booting up the Insane Trilogy for the first time since your childhood, you're probably going to wonder how you ever got through these challenging platforming games as a kid. The original Crash Bandicoot in particular is ridiculously demanding, and a good chunk of its later levels could have easily taken up half the slots on this list. But it's the infuriating High Road section that had players up in arms when the game released forcing you to traverse a narrow, unreliable wooden bridge with pitfalls, trap planks and wild hogs all out to get you. The high road shows the true masochistic colours that hide behind Crash Bandicoot's seemingly lovable exterior. It's a level that was admittedly always hard, but with this remastered developer Vicarious Visions opted to use one jumping system across all three games. And unfortunately, it's not the one that this challenging area was made for. That doesn't really soothe the pain when you continue to fall, 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 fall to your death after being certain you should have nailed a jump though, and it makes the high road one of the most infuriating levels ever created. Number 3. Shao Kahn's never-ending combos in Mortal Kombat Even now, the scars earned during Mortal Kombat 9's final boss still haven't healed. Being able to hit you with the same overpowered combos over and over again, MK9 Shao Kahn could absolutely ruin an otherwise promising attempt at beating him with one single move. Every tactic was useless. Get too cocky and he'd punish you as soon as you overreached, but try to goad him out and chip away at his health and he could take you apart just as easily. Even worse is that there wasn't much you could do to cheese a victory either, except for a couple of unreliable trial and error techniques. And unless you were really lucky or really good, and let's face it, it was probably the former, you almost certainly had to resort to one of these cheap tactics to avoid being pounded into oblivion. If you can't beat him, you might as well join him, I guess. Number 2. Escorting Emma in Metal Gear Solid 2 about two-thirds of the way through Metal Gear Solid 2, the whole game crashes to a halt. Sent on a mission to save Emma Emmerich, a vital asset and also your ally Otacon's sister, the title forces you to literally hold the character's hand as you escort her around the mostly destroyed and submerged sections of the game's offshore plant. Because she's stricken with a condition that leaves her barely able to walk, you have to very slowly help Emma around enemy-infested levels until you can get her to safety. Leave her alone to clear out an area first, and you risk her being noticed by a guard you missed. But take Emma along with you and you might end up getting her killed in an unintended firefight if you're not careful. It's all boring and plodding stuff on its own, but because it comes in between some of the most challenging and labyrinthian underwater sections in gaming history, it's enough to make you loathe the character completely. But then, and then after all of this, in the end she ends up being killed anyway, making the whole section feel like even more of a waste of time. Thanks for that, Kojima. Number 1. Getting flattened by Ornstein and Smau in Dark Souls Look, no matter how much of a Dark Souls pro you might claim to be, there's no way that the fight against Ornstein and Smau in the original game didn't completely break your soul. Dark Souls is at its worst when it forces you to face off against multiple enemies at a time, often leading to cheap deaths that feel particularly frustrating because of the game's otherwise tough but fair approach to difficulty. But these encounters are bad enough when it's just regular enemies you're fighting. Never mind two bosses who did a PhD in kicking your ass. 
Because it's such an intense game of trial and error, a good chunk of players probably only completed this section through sheer luck and perseverance. And honestly, I don't know if I could actually replicate another successful victory if my life depended on it. It's even worse when you come close to getting that victory, only to be denied it at the last moment. As the hope is crushed and you feel your own will to live, being sucked out just like the Nazis at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. All of the bosses in Dark Souls are difficult, sure, but battling Ornstein and Sma was like throwing yourself at a brick wall made of death and misery until your mangled body somehow slips through the cracks and onto the other side, and can completely and utterly go f*** itself.